Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at a couple of very interesting classic telescopes. These are Takahashi's, they're special, and uh, they appear to be almost identical. And as a matter of fact, are almost identical in almost all respects, with a couple of really kind of interesting little quirky changes and distinctions between them. Uh, first of all, this one is called a Teagle 60. This one is called a Newton Teagle 60. I don't know what that exactly means. It's certainly not a Newtonian, though that's for sure. These are both um, refractors. These are actually the same objectives as the FC60 telescopes, uh, which is a fluorite with a front regular glass rear fluorite element. So uh, I got some surprises for you, stay tuned. I compared these two scopes with this scope. This is a Takahashi triplet apochromat um, TS65, a little bit more aperture, but not a substantially different telescope. This is, however, um, standard glass, it's a triplet, and it's called a semi-apochromat. And I, when I first saw this, I thought, why do they call that a semi-apochromat? It doesn't have any color. Uh, I looked at it with careful tests at the edge of the moon, and uh, boy, it seemed perfect, absolutely beautiful. Of course, I was comparing it to regular acromats. Um, now, when I compared this scope with these guys, I said, ah, now I get it. This thing does have just the tiniest amount of color. On the uh, limb of the moon, which as I consider to be a, a very, very good test of chromatic aberration. On the limb of the moon, this thing has just a little bit of fringing. These two things, none, zero, zilch, not as no fringing whatsoever. In addition, of course, the optics, well, not of course, but the optics are perfect in all three of these scopes. That is, the diffraction patterns inside and outside focus are absolutely perfectly identical, symmetrical and identical inside and outside focus. So uh, they're perfect optics uh, with that just ever so slight hint of chromatic aberration in this scope. Uh, amazing. I was finally able to see why this is called a semi-apochromat when I compared it with these. Which of these scopes came first? Uh, here are the serial numbers and I don't really think they are offering very much insight in that regard. The only significant difference about these two scopes was a bit of a surprise to me. I noticed that, in fact, the Teagle 60 has a slightly different colored reflection than the Newton Teagle. And of course, the performance of the two things is <laughs> absolutely indistinguishable. Let me show you the basic operation of this telescope. This is on a really, really nice little Altas mount, like so. Uh, it's got friction clutches here, uh, and there's one here. They are uh, fairly unnecessary. You're not going to usually, I mean, there's enough, you know, Takahashi designs these things so beautifully. There's enough friction there that you can pretty much leave those unclamped and everything will still work. For example, yeah, let's put it there. See, I can still use the slow motion and I might want to tighten it down just a little bit. Give me a little more positive control. It also is a matter of balance. If you put something extra heavy on the back, it might change things a little bit. But you can adjust it here for balance. Suppose you put a great big heavy eyepiece back there. You can adjust it there. And it's the ergonomics Takahashi. It's just exquisite. Uh, and this one, you're probably never going to need to mess with that. It's got enough friction to do the job for you here. Uh, one big difference between this and, say, the normal telescopes is that the this has little set screws uh, here instead of the kind of knobby deals. 
Uh, so it's one of those deals where you set it once and then uh, you will hopefully never have to mess with it. It's also, this is quite sturdy, this casting here. Oh, this is just a beautiful casting. Look at that thing. I love these Takahashi castings. It's exquisite things, just things of, of great beauty. This is, by the way, reversible, so you can flip it over and turn it around and put it wherever you want to. Yeah, there's some set screws here to do that. So you can uh, make a lot of changes there if you want to. Um, now, let me show you what happens at the tailpiece here. You've got a friction kind of a device there. So you can, you've can you got a lot of latitude here. You can put all, all kinds of things on there with no problem. It's even got, a, you can probably see that on the video. It's got this little indicator here to tell you, oh, this is where you would do what you would set it for. Um, you know, star diagonal and um, all sorts of straight through type things. So you've got that thing, although it's, it's just a rough suggestion. So you, you slide this thing back and forth, lock it down, then you've got this. Now, I'm not a big fan of helical focus, focusers, but this is Takahashi, folks. They do it right. I mean, it is just, oh, beautiful, exquisite helical focuser there. Didn't have a lot of the slot that you find in helical focusers at cheaper versions. Just, just exquisite, beautiful. One thing that's very interesting about this scope is the great attention to detail, like uh, Takahashi always does. Uh, the design here is meant to be a combination of a spotting scope and or astronomical telescope. Either one, it's very good for either purpose. Uh, one of the nice things about this is they designed this so that you can easily slide the tube through. Instead of having a great big dew shield on here, you can slide this all the way back. As a matter of fact, that's what they want you to do for storage, is to fold it all the way back like that. But it's very easy to remove the whole thing that way. This telescope can be used straight through with, uh, this is an 18 millimeter ortho. Beautiful this Takahashi eyepiece. Gives you about 28 power or something like that. So it can be used straight through with this eyepiece or it can be used with a star diagonal kind of a traditional Takahashi slide-in arrangement like so. It also has a it also comes with a seven millimeter ortho. Uh, really good eyepieces. All this these optics are, are superb. It also comes with a poro prism and all you do to use the poro prism this is a straight through device that gives you an erect image. So you've got a couple of different options here. And this, the optics here are superb. Everything Takahashi does is superb. There's a little issue with this. The telescope will also accept a standard uh, Vixen adapter. You can also get the very expensive Takahashi adapter. It does the same thing. This will allow you to use inch and a quarter eyepieces. As you can see, the height of this telescope is not perfect for, for me. I'm a 5'11", and this is pretty low for me to be looking straight through. If I want to do any nature observation, I'd be squatted down like that. Uh, it's just a little bit too low, unless I had a table to put it on or something, or maybe I was seated. Um, so when I'm going to use this for uh, nature observation, I'll use this device. This is a uh, 45 degree correct image kind of a deal. Uh, with my good old uh, Teleview Plossel, and I'll use that, and that's my go-to eyepiece for nature observation. I was using this telescope to look at a bird the other day. I swear that bird, <laughs> it was maybe 20 feet away, I swear that bird would reach out and peck me in the nose or something. It was really good, uh, and the optics are sharp, very, very sharp. Uh, even with this device, this device is a bit of a compromise here, but uh, anyway, it still works wonderfully for that purpose, as long as you can... Uh, kind of either get down lower, this is a bit more comfortable for me, or straight through uh, seated, something like that. Now for astronomy, now you use the star diagonal. It's not bad at all. And you're, uh, you're going to crouch down a little bit, but it's not uncomfortable. It's just fine. So uh, this is okay. It's not ideal. But it's not bad.
Take a look at this. Watch this. You're not going to believe it. Look at that. One hand, everything. It's all loaded, ready to go. Boom. One hand, and this is a light one hand. I mean, this is not heavy. Set it up in about, mm -hmm. what was that? Three seconds? Something like that. Not very long. Aim it. Uh, let's see, there's the moon. Uh, aimed. I'm ready to observe in 10 seconds. <laughs> a little extreme, maybe. But it's good to go. It's very, very, it's a wonderful little telescope. Grab and go. You, you're not going to find anything better than this for a grab and go scope. Of course, if you have to take it out and set it up, if you have to take it out of its case, that's a different story. Let's go over that right now. Okay, here I am. I'm getting ready to set up my Newton Teagle. I unzip the case here. There's the scope inside. This is the way Takahashi recommends that you store it. It's in this kind of folded configuration like that. And it's pretty good. Not bad. So now yeah, we'll get it out. Extend the legs a little bit. Let's not go all the way. Let's just go a little ways here. And of course you got It's pretty easy. These legs and uh, the tripod, the whole, whole thing ergonomically is quite easy. So now I've got this set up. So loosen this. This is the way Takahashi recommends that you store it. But then you put it out like that, tighten it up. The lens cap off that seems to be just a regular uh, camera lens cap so now I'm all set now let's have a close look at this Newton Teagle it's a beautiful color scheme if you ask me So, what is the Teagle Telescope, and what is the difference between the Teagle and the Newton Teagle? Uh, as far as I can tell, the differences between these two scopes are negligible. The coatings have virtually no effect on the image that I can see. Maybe with a spectrophotometer you could detect something, but um, nothing that is obvious to me. The, um, the basic function of the telescope is as a combination. It's a really good grab-and-go telescope for... Uh, nature viewing, you can pack it up, take it with you, it's light, oh my goodness, it's so light. So it's perfect for that, it's great for a quick look, uh, put the star diagonal in it and take it out in the backyard and have a quick look at something. Absolutely superb uh, for those functions. Um, now, why didn't it sell better? I don't know, because the optics are superb, they're absolutely Takahashi perfect. Uh, maybe the fact that it's trying to be too many things. Maybe the fact that they were trying to compete with uh, the likes of Nikon and some of the other uh, uh, spotting scope manufacturers. Uh, and maybe they kind of edged a little bit into that and maybe not where they wanted to go marketing-wise. I'm not sure. I don't know exactly the answer to that. But it's a wonderful little telescope. A nice, easy, quick grab-and-go package that you can take with you, uh, pack it up and take it almost anywhere. I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of the Teagle and the Newton Teagle 6D telescopes. Thank you for watching.